Hi everyone, my name's Hannah, I have a stoma, and one day I want to have kids. So, how does that happen? How does having a stoma affect pregnancy, and birth, and all of that stuff? Before we get into things, I feel like I've got a few disclaimers I need to make. One, not a doctor, just somebody with ulcerative colitis and an ileostomy, and also someone who wants to be pregnant and have kids, some point. And the second disclaimer, because I posted on my social media that I was making this video and asked for any questions you have, and a lot of them were, are you pregnant? Uh, no, I'm not pregnant. So we can clear the air with that one, I'm not pregnant. I'm not currently trying to get pregnant, no. Not right now. So because I'm not a doctor, and because I'm not currently pregnant, this isn't going to be a video filled with loads of information about that. It's more about the decision-making process, what options are available to me, and the things that I currently know where I'm at now in my journey of having a stoma and all of that. So a lot of things have happened. There has been some information given to me by consultants recently at an appointment and it's just all part of the journey. So I thought I would share and also one of the things that I found um, from asking for questions on social media, some people who have got ostomies and have had kids were replying and giving lots of information which basically means that I probably just have more questions now. So many questions. I'm the one with the questions. I have so many questions. But like I said, it's part of the journey and I have been sharing with you my whole journey with this online and so this feels like an appropriate update because these are the things that I'm thinking about at the moment. So where do we begin? First of all, yes, I can potentially get pregnant. It is possible for me to get pregnant and have a vaginal birth with a stoma. So that was one of the first things that I asked my doctors and also one of the first things that they kind of like told me as well. They were like, you can still have kids the natural way, the biological way, vaginally and all of that. So that's, so that's good news. But obviously there's loads of other different factors that come into like if you can have kids and if you give birth vaginally or, or not, that might be impacted by other things and not by my stoma. That's why I'm saying potentially I can do that. My stoma might not necessarily be the thing that stops me from doing those things. So here's the thing, even though doctors and nurses were telling me, yes, you can get pregnant, like it's all fine, like we'll obviously monitor you and all of that stuff, I still couldn't get my head around it because all of the images that I have seen of pregnant people are like skinny, skinny white women um, with like massive bumps but if you looked at them from behind you wouldn't be able to tell that they were pregnant. Like that is the image of a pregnant person that I have in my head because that is all I've seen. Other than like people walking down the streets but they have clothes on so I don't know like what's on like underneath, like do they have stone bags or not, I don't know. So I went to Google images and just searched pregnant with stoma and found some photos of people who were pregnant with stomas. It just made me realize that I'd just never seen that before and I think I really needed to see it to believe it. It was just really helpful for me to see that imagery. Like to me, that was almost more proof that it was possible than just a doctor simply telling me that it was possible. And this is why representation matters, people. Like. It is so important to be able to see yourself and be able to see that your body or like who you are, like doing the things in life that you want to do and, and see examples of that. So that was a bit bit of a moment for me, looking at all those pictures, I was like, okay, yeah, pregnant bellies with a stoma bag attached to them. Okay, this is a thing. So we know it's possible. However, there's some other stuff going on with my body that we need to discuss first. Basically, I technically at the moment have a temporary stoma, which means I can have further surgery to reverse it and create an internal J pouch, which I don't know all that much about because like I said, I'm not a doctor. If you want to find out more, Google it. But I had been receiving 
different kind of contradictory messages from different healthcare professionals that I was talking to about whether or not it was possible to um, have a pregnancy and give birth if you had a J pouch. Some were saying, yeah, it's totally fine. Others were saying, um, no, you can't. Others were saying, yes, it's fine, but you'll have to have a C-section. It was all a bit <laughs> confusing. And, and this was coming from like the different IBD and stoma nurses that I was talking to. I was basically waiting for an appointment with my consultant. So a few months ago, I finally got an appointment with the colorectal surgeon, consultant, person at my hospital to talk through my options, my options. So the reason why my stoma is temporary and I can have this further surgery to um, reverse it if I would want to is because I still have my rectum and they need your rectum in place to be able to do their fiddly surgery things and create this new internal pouch system inside. So in my future, there is further surgery that is either um, a J pouch surgery or I remove my rectum and then I have a permanent stoma. Now here's the kicker. This is when things changed for me. This is when, you know, life decisions got altered. Because I've always known that I wanted to have kids and I'm with my partner who also wants to have kids. So we've had that conversation, but in our heads, it, it wasn't imminent. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't anytime soon. But basically what the consultant said to me, and this was also later confirmed by another consultant at a different appointment that I had, is that further surgery, whether that is J pouch or removal of the rectum, will dramatically decrease my fertility. And here's the other kicker. Oh, so many kickers. They don't know why. They don't know why. And you know what? I've got a hunch that it's got to do with the fact that there's not that much research done into women's health. Although I feel like with pregnancy, that's the one that they do the most research on. They're just like, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, both consultants were basically saying, we observe in people after this surgery that their fertility decreases. However, they don't know why that happens. They just know that it does happen. So the reason why the first surgery that I had to remove my colon doesn't affect my fertility is because it's abdominal surgery. So it's like higher up and in your intestines. However, the removal of the rectum or the creation of the J pouch surgery, that all happens low down in the pelvic area. And so they think it's got something to do with the fact that you're meddling around with the organs that are around the uterus and it's all like near the womb and the ovaries and stuff. And they don't know whether it just disrupts the organ or um, moves stuff around in a way that means that you can't get pregnant. Um, or maybe um, p after the surgery, like scar tissue forms inside in a way that means it, it, those organs like don't work as well. They're just like, oh, I don't know, it just happens. So <laughs> great. <laughs> Come on, come on science, we can do better. We can do better science. <sighs> you might be thinking, do I have to make this decision now? Can I not just put off this further surgery for a J pouch or for a permanent stoma 20, 30 years in the future? Like, do I really need to be making further surgery decisions now? Because the other thing that the consultant told me is that because my previous surgeries have been open surgery, it wouldn't be safe to do keyhole for the next one. So basically I know that I'm gonna have further open surgery again, which sucks. I'm actually really bummed out about that more than any of the other news. Like that is the news that I'm most bummed out about, but I'm like, I've recovered from open surgery twice before. I can do it again. <laughs> uh. So is there a rush? Yes, there kind of is a rush because cancer. That's a really big word just to throw in there. But basically the longer that we just leave my rectum, this is my rectum, hi. The longer we leave that just like hanging out in my body as a little rectal stump, apparently my chances of getting rectal cancer increase. So it's the longer you leave it, the like higher your chances get. And so they don't like leaving it just hanging out there for very long. That's why they like to do further surgery, like as soon as you want basically. So yeah. So this was something that I kind of had an inkling of because I was hearing different things from different nurses. But then when I had this appointment and they were like, okay, so your risk of cancer will increase the longer that you keep your rectum just hanging out there in. So it means that you do need further surgery um, sooner rather than later, but also 
you probably want to have kids if you do want to have kids before. It takes a long time to have children, especially if you want more than one. Like, we're talking years here. <laughs> so I called Dan <laughs> and we basically just pushed everything forwards. No, not that simple. Well, it kind of is that simple actually. It's just like, okay, so we have to have kids soon, I guess. But not right now, we're not trying. We don't have like a date in mind in terms of like when we're gonna start trying, but we just, we're just like a bit more aware of the timeline that we have. And there also isn't really a strict timeline on like, this is your cutoff date of like when you'll need to have further surgery. It is kind of flexible. Like they didn't seem in too much of a rush, the consultant, the consultant was just like, go and complete your family. That's the medical term for it. Complete your family and then come back and we'll talk about surgery. <laughs> what, a, what a word, it's like, must tick that box off the life checklist. <laughs> Very strange. But the other thing is that I'm currently getting colitis symptoms in my rectum. So I have some inflammation there. I am currently taking steroid suppositories to like keep it at bay. And that's actually been working wonders and really, really helping. And I have to have regular monitoring of my rectum. So I've got another flexible sigmoidoscopy coming up soon, which is where they put a little camera up your bum. So they're checking for more inflammation and they take biopsies and they also check for precancerous cells. So even though I've been given all of this information, and that is going to help me and my partner come up with our plan and know what our options are and make a decision. Sometimes the decision gets made for you. Like if my inflammation gets really bad and they're just like, we should just remove this rectum. Or if at one of these tests that I have, they do find precancerous cells and they're just like, let's just take it out. So I'm also very aware that I might not get a choice in the matter, depending on what my body wants to do. You know, bodies have a mind of their own, how dare they? Oh, and I feel like I should also say, in terms of the further surgery that I'll have, I am leaning more towards having my rectum removed and having a permanent stoma than having a J pouch. And maybe I'll make a whole other video about um, the pros and cons and weighing those two things up. If you would like to see that, let me know. So where we're at now is monitoring my rectum and seeing what's going on there and kids soon-ish, but not right now, still. So yeah, that's where we're at. So this might sound weird, but hear me out. Obviously I've already told my parents and some close friends about my recent appointments and everything that is going on. And I have this like battle in my head about it like being unfeminist or like, not unfeminist, but a bit reckless maybe, like having kids under 30. Cause like, you know, everyone has kids like when they're over 30 now and I'm still under 30 and I'm like, oh, is that, is that bad? People are gonna think that I'm young and silly and unfeminist? Oh, I don't know. This is, this is a lot of like internal hogwash in my head. Oh my God, did I say hogwash? Hogwash, poppy, poppy gosh. And it almost feels like a weird relief that I can give this medical excuse for having kids earlier than just like, I wanted to. I don't know why that puts me at ease more, even though actually ever since I was really young, I knew that I wanted to have kids young-ish. Like I knew I wanted to be like a young mum, um, but I'm like in my late twenties. So, you know, I don't know if that made any sense, but basically I like that I have doctor's orders to like get a move on. Yeah, that's my reason. Okay, I know what it is. Basically, society is really judgmental about when, if, how people choose to have children. And so I like that I have this safety net of it's health reasons, actually, <laughs> just because society is really judgmental about what people do with their wombs. So I'm like, doctor's orders? It, it, don't judge me judge my body that I have no control over whatsoever. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I don't know. Okay, you guys have some questions and I don't know if I have all of the answers and actually some of these questions just raised more questions for me because, oh my God, I have no idea. And I'm sure if, when I do get pregnant, um, I will be asking all of these to a professional. Not directly related to pregnancy slash birth, etc. but is there a chance of colitis being passed on to any children you may have? So from what I understand, IBD is not hereditary. However, it is very prevalent amongst the Jewish community. 
or there's just like a higher percentage of it in Jews. I am Jewish. No one else in my immediate Jewish family has ulcerative colitis or another form of IBD. And my mum even married a non-Jew and I still got it. Um, but no, that's not something that I'm worried about because I'm pretty sure it's not hereditary. But again, we'll check with a professional. This is a great question. Would you have less of a bump as there is more room for the baby inside? I understand the logic of this question because I did have a very large organ removed. However, the large organ that I had removed is here like this, it goes like this. And then there's my small intestines with, in the middle of that, which I still have. It's just this bit, the big bit that got removed. And then my uterus is down here. Oh, I don't know, it's down here somewhere. Um, and that, the womb is what the baby goes into and then that expands. So, and then everything like moves out of the way. I don't know, I still feel like I'll just have a bump the size of the baby. So Nicola who runs Vanilla Blush who make underwear and swimwear for people with ostomies, absolutely love her. She said, two live births post ostomy, two C-sections, colorectal surgeon was present for both of my boys. That's really interesting, I didn't know that, but I guess if there's gonna be complications, you need someone there who knows about all of your gut surgery and stuff. Stoma measurement was 28 millimeters till I was seven months and then it was 55. Oh my God, it basically doubled. And then shrunk 24 hours after C-section. There wasn't an orifice <laughs> leaking from, oh my God. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah, I imagine that it is a bit more of a leak because like we can't like push um, output from the stoma. It just kind of like comes out. Um, but thank you so much for sharing. Also worth noting in terms of having a C-section that is not the same as the surgery that I had before. So let me explain by demonstration. So this is my scar. My scar goes all the way down here, across my belly button. This was my surgery scar. This is my stoma, hello. Um, however, if I have a C-section, that will be here and it will be horizontal. So it'll be like going, it's like at the top of your pubic bone where you have your, where you have a C-section. Also, this is not a six pack by any means. My jeans have just been <laughs> digging in. Different kind of surgery, different scar. My wife has a stoma and we just had a baby. It's tricky, but very possible. Restricted where the baby could go. So she showed in a weird way. I don't know what that means. Where she, where the baby could go inside and, and she showed in a weird way. She showed like on an ultrasound or she showed like as she was coming out of the vagina, she showed in a weird way. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it's tricky but possible. That's good to know. So a lot of people poop when giving birth. Yeah, it's true. Because pushing uses those same muscles. Will pushing a baby out push poo out your stoma? I don't think so because that's not, I don't use any muscles to push poo out of my stoma. And if I don't, will I have to practice using them before giving birth? I mean, do pe don't people like practice like the Kegel exercises and stuff anyway? But again, I don't know. But also because I still have my rectum, whenever I get like my inflammation there, I am pushing out like mucus and blood. Um, so I'm still getting some painful practice in at that. One question that came up a lot was, will my stoma change size as my stomach grows? And Nicola kind of answered this a bit because in her experience, her stoma did get bigger, but actually this is something that I had not even considered until um, I asked this question on social media. I just had not crossed my mind, but yeah, maybe for some people it does, maybe for some people it doesn't, I don't know. But um, I imagine, like with most things that it, it may stretch, but then like as your body like goes back to a non-pregnant body, then it might go back to the way it was before. Who knows? Again, we'll be asking professionals when I am pregnant, if I get pregnant. Because all your guts go into your ribs, is yours in danger of not stretching properly? So I can't remember when this was, but it was very recently, I think that I learned that like all of your organs just like push upwards to make room for the baby. I was like, what, what? But no, I've, I've got no idea um, how this would work with me. I, but I technically have less organs. So I don't know. I don't know where they would go if they would still like go upwards or like if there is a bit more space for them. I don't know. 
Who knows? Oh my God. This is a really interesting question. What age would you explain your stoma to your kids? I think I would just explain it when they start asking. I don't think I'd ever hide it from them. I also imagine that whilst they're like still really young, they'll probably see me naked a lot. So it will just like always be there. It will just always be a part of their lives. Um, Dan did make a joke after I had surgery, just being like, well, you're not going to be able to potty train our kids because you don't know how to poo. And I was like, excuse me, I had 25 years of pooing. I know how to potty train. <laughs> But yeah, it is kind of interesting. Like you would be potty training kids and just being like, okay, so this is what pooing is. This is what you do. And they'd be like, mummy doesn't do that. I'd be like, yes, mummy is special though. <laughs> Hasn't this been enlightening for me as well as you maybe? Thank you so much for watching. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments any more questions that you might have about this, any more videos that you would like to see on the topic. And also if you have a stoma and you have been pregnant or you are pregnant, please please, oh my God, share your experiences in the comments because, wow, there is, there is a lot to learn. There is a lot to know. And also I feel like different doctors give people different kinds of information and different advice. So I would love to hear if your doctors have said anything different to the information that I have been given. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video and I'll see you soon. Bye. Should I have topped up my lipstick? I think we're good.